the Denver Broncos, Chicago Bears, Miami Dolphins, Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Minnesota Vikings are all in the running for a new head coach. Uh, the Raiders as well, but they're worrying about their playoff game. But ranking these head coaching positions, what is the worst and the best head coaching positions available at this point? I mean, you got to go from worst to best because you got to look at the pros and cons of each team. And we're going we're gonna to go ahead and name all five of these head coaching vacancies. Number five, I'm going to say it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think this is uh, pretty, pretty uh, obvious at this point. Probably worst on a lot of your guys' list. There's not really much going for them. I mean, the pros of it, Trevor Lawrence, once-in-a-generation talent, could develop. Yeah, you have that upside of Trevor Lawrence. You have the number one overall pick, which you could draft someone or you could trade down. And then you also have great weather. That's it. That's really it. I mean, you've got some talent here and there uh, mixed in as well, but... I, I, nothing really is attractive for the Jacksonville Jaguars other than that Trevor Lawrence is the quarterback. I mean, just ask Urban Meyer, who took a job only because of Trevor Lawrence and ignored the fact that, hey, you have defensive struggles. You want to get Travis Etienne in the first round instead of getting like an offensive lineman that you really need. Like, there, there's a lot of aspects of the Jacksonville Jaguars that need some work. Uh, number four on this list, I'm going to go ahead and mention... I'm going to mention the Chicago Bears. It, it, it's between the Chicago Bears and the Miami Dolphins at this point, but I'm going to mention the Bears just because I know you have Justin Fields as, you know, like your Trevor Lawrence. Like, he was a rookie. You have a lot of upside and Fields. But, again, there's just way too many holes to fill. The defense looks good when the matchup is good, and when the, the matchup is bad, they don't look the best. I mean, you've got some bright sides. Robert Quinn, uh, you've got some... Good corners and Jalen Johnson, who hasn't had a bad season this year. David Montgomery as well, but he's, I mean, he's probably going to be dealing with some contract issues in the next, uh, probably in 2022, 2023. You've got some issues to fill, especially the offensive line. Like, you've got to address that. And just because uh, the crapshoot that the Chicago Bears offense has been as of late, Ryan Pace, Matt Nagy, those guys did not work out. And now you got to come in, bring in a general manager, bring in a head coach as well that can clean up the mistakes that those guys have made. So I would say number four are the Chicago Bears. Number three, I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins as the uh, third best head coaching vacancy available. Uh, the pros of it, they have a great defense, great defense. Young up-and-coming players such as Jalen Waddell, Tua Tagovailoa. I mean, they're still kind of feeling them out. Uh, I mean, he's very accurate, but it's because he completes short intermediate passes and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes which is all you could ask for but as far as like the difference maker that they drafted took to be not yet just hasn't developed into that just yet they're hoping that they can but as of right now no so you have uh jalen waddle mike is you're gonna have to sign to a big contract extension and you have a very good defense you just gotta worry about the run game at this point duke johnson miles gaskin even though duke johnson has been looking good he's not the future You've got to get a running game going. You've got to get some offensive line issues fixed uh, for the Miami Dolphins. And then you're set. The cons, I mean, Brian Flores, he was dealt with a, a bad hand from the time that he took this job three years ago. When you had Josh Rosen and Ryan Fitzpatrick as your quarterbacks in 2019, everybody expected the Dolphins to not do that good. And they didn't, but they did better than what people expected. Like they had a lot of good upsets that season and it's because of Brian Flores and then the year after that oh, well the Dolphins they're not going to do that good again they're probably going to be like seven and nine six and ten whatever no nah, they actually put up a winning season and we're actually because of tiebreakers away from making an AFC wildcard spot oh man they start one and seven the Miami Dolphins are not looking good in 2021 well Brian Flores turned this team around seven game winning streak and gave them another winning season and swept the greatest coach of all time in Bill Belichick. I would say the cons of that are Brian Flores were the reason that the Miami Dolphins did so good. And whoever comes in as head coach has to match the same football IQ of Brian Flores to turn that team around. Team number two, and I would rank them at number one because they are, they are only one position away from being a playoff team. But I'm going to put the Denver Broncos at 
number two. And let me explain the pros. The pros, you're just a quarterback away. That's it. That's it. You have a run game. Melvin Gordon's not coming back next year. His contract is up. They have Javante Williams. There's no need to re-sign him. So you're going to have Javante Williams in your running game. You're set. Offensive line, set. Defense, set. I mean, they give up some big plays here and there in the secondary, but for the most part, they're set. Now, this is why I have them ranked at number two and not at number one, is because that's the con. You're a quarterback away. And who is the personnel as executive, player executive, that makes decisions along with uh, George Payton, the general manager, on who they're going to bring in on that team? especially at the quarterback position, it's John Elway. Denver great will never lose his job with the Denver Broncos because of what he did as a player for the Denver Broncos. However, you got to analyze and really think, all right, well, John Elway, you brought us the Super Bowl by bringing in Peyton Manning. You made that decision. You made the tough decision and moving on from Tim Tebow, bringing in Peyton Manning, and it helped us reach two Super Bowls and one of them we won. Cool. After that... What happened? Nothing really. Nothing really. Your future quarterback and Brock Osweiler, no, he dipped. He's gone. Didn't work out. Then you draft Paxton Lynch in the first round. No, didn't work out. Oh, let's go down the route of Trevor Simeon, maybe. No, didn't work out. Oh, let's go down the route of bringing in veteran quarterbacks because this quarterback is good, and I believe in him. Case Keenum, didn't work out. Joe Flacco, didn't work out. Teddy Bridgewater, didn't work out. Drew Locke, drafting another quarterback, did not work out. So it just hasn't worked out with John Elway. And if I'm a head coaching candidate, I I would consider the Denver Broncos. But because of John Elway being there and knowing like, hey, I want to bring in this quarterback. What are your thoughts? It's going to be hard to kind of tell him, like, dude, I don't know. Unless it's Aaron Rodgers, I, I don't want to bring in another veteran quarterback. And then, number one, I have the Minnesota Vikings. The pros of this, the roster is already in place. There were just a couple games, two, three, four games away that they gave up, they blew from being an NFC wild card team. I mean, comparable, they could be talent wise. They could be comparable, but comparable to someone like the Las Vegas Raiders, like the Cincinnati Bengals. Like they're not the best team in the NFL, but they could be like, oh, they could make a push in the playoffs. They could be dark horses. And that's why the Minnesota Vikings, I'd say the roster is there. Mike Zimmer has had some very good success with the Minnesota Vikings. And the reason why he got fired is because of the collapses that he had. He was not able to finish games. He just wasn't able to. So if you get a head coach candidate in there that Actually, he does a little bit better and was able to finish out those two, three, four games that they ended up losing. You're fine. You're fine. You've got the quarterback there and Kirk Cousins, regardless of whatever, what everyone else says, Kirk Cousins is fine. He's okay. He's the quarterback. You've got Dalvin Cook in the running game. The offensive line is not that bad. The defense isn't that bad. The secondary needs some holes to fill in, but it's still a very good job. And might I also add, that Aaron Rodgers more than likely will not be returning to the Green Bay Packers. So the NFC North, wide open. And who are the favorites if Aaron Rodgers were to leave? The Minnesota Vikings. So whichever head coach takes the Minnesota Vikings job, as long as you don't mess it up in free agency, as long as you don't mess it up in the draft, you already have the roster. The competition isn't really necessarily there in the NFC North. You can win that division. You can run that division for the next two, three years or so. 